All right, everyone. Welcome to first tech tip slash tutorial of my new channel. It's gonna be a channel full of nothing but tech tips, IT tips, installs, tutorials, all that good stuff, as well as some live streams. Definitely gonna be doing some live streams tonight. The day this video is uploaded, so please go check it out. But this video is specifically regarding Dolphin Emulator. It's going to be the best GameCube and Wii emulator, I think, out there, if not the only one. So, let's get started. First thing you're going to want to do, I will leave this link in the description. You're going to go to dolphin-emu.org. Go ahead and click download. When you go to that, it'll take you to this screen. And just go with the first one, Windows X64. For anyone running Windows 10 and 11, it is the exact same process. So do not worry. Go ahead and get that downloaded. Once that's downloaded, you're going to find in your downloads folder, Dolphin Master. You're going to need WinRAR or 7-Zip to extract this file. I prefer WinRAR, so go ahead and I will leave the description link in the description as well. Go ahead and download WinRAR or 7-Zip as of your choice. What you want to do is click the file and go ahead and extract it. I like to extract it to my desktop just because it makes this process much easier. As you can tell, mine's already there. So you'll hit OK. You'll pick your folder, you'll hit OK. For me, I'm going to hit Cancel. Yours will go through a very quick extraction process. does not take long. When it is done, you will find this folder somewhere on your desktop. Dolphin X64. This, this is Dolphin. I know it looks concerning. There's a few options here. Nothing really to worry about except for one thing. Dolphin. When you have this open, what I would suggest is clicking, left click, then right click and send to desktop to create a shortcut for you it'll be much easier rather than having to go into this folder and open it up every time when you do that it will also be on your desktop but for me mine's going to be in here this is where i put my shortcut obviously uh, other emulators here that i will be also making tutorials for so stay tuned so once dolphin is done and installed you make your shortcut i say before you even open it what you want to do, preferably on a data drive, a D drive, or D drive, whatever you want, create a folder named GameCube. You can make it GameCube games, games, GameCube, whatever you want to make it. Just make a folder dedicated for those GameCube games. As you can tell, I already have games in here. Regarding games, I cannot legally tell you where, how, or what to download. But I will leave a link in the description to make things easier for you guys. And that's what I'm going to leave it at. So after you make your folder, go ahead and exit out, go back to your shortcut, and let's actually open up Dolphin. Go ahead and double click. And now for you guys, you might get a pre-screen prompt, hit OK, don't show again, all that good stuff. Don't worry about it, nothing to worry. First things first, you will not have any games. To set your game path, which we just created, right, that, that GameCube path, you're going to want to go back into Dolphin hit config or you can go to options and configuration go to paths and add the path here find your path click it select it once it's there you're good and then every time you add a game to that folder it will automatically go into dolphin now let's just say you extracted a game to your desktop that's okay you can click and drag actually the game to your desktop uh, from your desktop to dolphin right to here really easy but what that means is that whatever that file what wherever that file sits dolphin needs to see it in that same exact location for you to be able to play it so if you move it you have to then go back and add a different path that's why I say make everything seamless and just create one path when you're done with that it's only a couple more things you don't want to go into graphics make sure you have this set to Vulkan it will find your graphics card for you, whether it's AMD or Nvidia. You want to go 416 by 9 because that is a normal widescreen monitor for a normal widescreen monitor. You can do start in full screen, which obviously is what it is. You can just start the game in full screen. I don't like to do that; it's all preference. And I like to use show FPS. It shows the actual frames per second that are rendered. Besides that, nothing else in the general setting of the graphics config you have to worry about. The next thing to worry about is enhancements. Go to enhancements, this will be set to native. Native is what the native GameCube could output. Well, clearly that's not enough for modern game monitors. 
you know, or screen monitors, I should say. So, what you're going to want to do is go to 3x native for 1080p. If you have a 720p monitor, you know, all according to what you have. Very easy. Uh, 1440p is essentially going to be 2K. Same with 2640, I believe, and 4K and up. You guys can figure that out. I don't have any 4K monitors, so we will be leaving it at 1080p. Makes the game, makes a world of a difference for the game. So make sure you use this enhancement. It's basically an upscaling feature. When you're done with that, you go ahead and close. Now we go to controllers. So to configure a controller, you'll have a bunch of options. For Xbox, it's going to be X input slash gamepad going to click that and then you're going to want to go ahead and map every single button so i've already set mine so it's all right um, but you guys will go ahead and click and then click the according button to your xbox or playstation controller for playstation i believe up here it will just say dual shock now i do like to show people you want to pull up an actual picture of a gamecube controller and there's many reasons and one will help you later and i'll show you why you make sure your Z button is correct, your C stick, which is your right stick, and then A, B, X, Y is obviously all different from normal. So, you know, I always tell people, map it how you want it. Don't go according to how I have it. But just pull up a picture when you do it. It makes things easier. So once you're done, make sure you hit save. People forget to do that. I know it's silly, but hit save, then close. Hit close again and controllers graphics and other configuration game paths everything's done it's it's pretty simple to set this up the only other thing i'll give you guys a little tip on is save and load states you're gonna i'll do that again because i was a little quick you're gonna go to options hotkey settings and then all the way over here to save and load state for those who don't know what save and load states are they are specifically save files that are essentially just the snap of a finger to get you back to wherever you created it. So it helps a lot with older games, being they tend to be really hard with no difficulty modifier and having boss levels and like almost impossible levels to beat that would take you multiple days. Those who played those games will know. Um, great, great function to use. So the way I tend to use it is save to selected slot, meaning it will give you the option to save to any slot because if you save to slot one, and then accidentally save the slot one again, you overrode what you originally saved. So it can be tricky. Now they are different per game. So you have 10 slots per game, but I always recommend save the selected slots so you can pick. What I do is if you go back and you look at what we're missing here from a, let's just say an Xbox controller, we're missing a left bumper and we're missing a back button. Hmm, okay, well that's good. Because we need two buttons to save and load save states. So, my save state, save to select the slot, is my left bumper. And my load is my back button. And this is why I told you guys, make sure you're setting this up essentially correctly. Because you'll have two buttons that are missing. And you need two buttons to do this. So it's really helpful. I always recommend everybody does save states. Besides that. You are ready to start a game. Like I said, it's on you guys to download the games, extract them into your save folder, and once they're there, they will just appear in Dolphin. I'm going to go ahead and load up... Uh, let's load up Super Smash. I will show you guys how it... You go ahead and click yes. Once you click yes, wrote save contents, as you can see at the top. It does make actual save contents like a like a game like a memory card. You can also change where that saves, but that's for more advanced people that more know what they're doing with computers. If you guys do have a question about that, let me know and uh, I'll create a video on that. But it's really not a big deal. The save uh, save states and save game files really don't tend to take too long. Um, <coughs> So I've just been sitting here on the screen back. So perfectly fine. And that's how you shut down a game. Go ahead and go back and click stop. Um, and that's really it. That's Dolphin, guys. It's my favorite emulator 
one I use the most. Uh, I tend to emulate more on my Steam Deck, which you guys can also look forward to some videos about that. How to emulate on that, how to do all kinds of good stuff there. So, really, everything for Dolphin is just in these simple three options right here. And once you guys can do that, and like I said, use that link in my description for some games, you guys have a nice, solid emulator set up on your computer. Any questions, please leave them in the description. I'm sorry, please leave them in the comments down below. Uh, subscribe because it's a new channel, and I'm looking forward to making some more videos. And uh, until next time, see ya.